Hey everyone, Dr. Nicholas Bernola Jr. here with my video summary on the vaginismus, three ways to dilate without dilators blog. The reason I decided to take on this subject is because I noticed that amongst the general population, there appeared to be a cloud of misunderstanding that shrouded dilation therapy. Much of what's been described to me sounds oddly similar to gauging an infected ear piercing. However, rest assured, dilation therapy is not intended to be painful, nor should it cause a great deal of discomfort when carried out by an experienced healthcare provider. In fact, dilation therapy is typically used to treat a condition known as vaginismus, which is a penetration disorder where any form of vaginal penetration is either painful, difficult, or even impossible despite the desire to do so. In the same way that the definition of dilation therapy is always changing, so are the accepted treatment methods. This is where dilation therapy comes in. Figuratively speaking, of course. Like some of the dilation less techniques we'll discuss, dilation therapy is intended to promote pelvic floor muscle relaxation to decrease pain during intercourse. Here's how it works. Under the instruction of a healthcare provider, a dilator, which is similar in composition and structure to the sex toy commonly referred to as a dildo, is inserted vaginally while the patient lies on her back for between five and 15 minutes. Typically, one can expect to begin with a dilator similar in diameter to a pinky finger with gradual increases every week or two. As someone becomes more comfortable with dilation therapy in the initial position, other positions such as standing may be introduced. Now, for our first dilation less dilation technique, I wanna direct your attention to the constant stress of everyday life. You know, the thing you were probably just getting over before I brought it up. That constant stress may actually inadvertently manifest itself physically in pelvic floor musculature. Approximately 20 minutes of short-term meditation has actually been shown to increase activation of the nervous system that permits the release of muscle tension. While the studies I reviewed suggesting meditation as a form of nervous system control included the time, they neglected to include other parameters. However, I found that anecdotally, online guided meditative recordings that help the user focus on staying alert and their breathing evoked favorable outcomes, which brings us to our next technique. While the reason isn't clear, there are studies that almost literally propose taking a minute or 30 to stop and smell the roses. Seasonal allergies permitting, of course. Further, in increments of eight to 10 minutes, slow, pranayama breathing, a practice that focuses on the inhalation, retention, and exhalation of a breath, whose name is quite frankly hilarious, has been shown to increase activation of that same nervous system, which permits the release of tension in muscles that may be causing penetrative pain during intercourse. Now, I want you to think of how you breathe on a daily basis. Will you classify yourself as a chest or belly dominant breather? Depending on how you answer, you may want to reconsider because shallow chest dominant breathing may deny your pelvic floor musculature the rest and stretch that they deserve, while deep belly dominant breathing may actually provide that rest and stretch. When you breathe through your belly, the pelvic floor muscles relax and stretch to accommodate the change in position of the abdominal organs. Pistoning is a term coined by Julie Weeb to describe the dynamic relationship between the pelvic floor musculature and respiratory diaphragm during belly breathing. But if you're watching this, arguably you're not a car. So why should you care about this whole piston thing? The vaginal canal passes through an opening in the pelvic floor musculature, which may stretch and relax with pistoning. This can permit less restricted passage of anatomical structures out of it, and for intimate purposes, into it. For a healthy pelvic floor, the piston effect can be demonstrated with a simple exercise. While lying on your back, with hips and knees resting at approximately 90 degrees, and knees separated slightly further than feet, place your dominant hand just below the rib cage and non-dominant hand on your chest. During inhalation, allow your stomach to push the dominant hand outward with as little chest movement as possible. Remain in this position and perform it for between five and 10 minutes. Candidates of dilation therapy who are not comfortable with that form of treatment may discuss the alternatives that we reviewed with a healthcare professional. 
Unlike those who are suffering from stress urinary incontinence as a complication of the female athlete triad, as I discussed in my previous blog, and assuming that one is being seen by a gynecologist regularly, when it comes to pain during sexual intercourse, seeing a physical therapist approved for direct access first may be deemed appropriate. The most difficult portion of getting past a diagnosis like vaginismus is staying positive. Try finding one thing that you can do every day that you look forward to. Whether it's taking a bubble bath or rocking out to your favorite 90s boy band like I do. Thanks, NSYNC. A happy positive state of mind can help put you one step closer to pain-free intercourse and one step further from dilation therapy. For more detailed information on the subject matter, feel free to visit my website at drnicholasvernolajr.com where you can read the blog or listen to the podcast. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to stop back the second week of every month for some research-based subject matter presented as a full written article, podcast, and video summary. Clinicians, you can also stop by weekly for my Sunday supplemental where I'll be providing some clinically-based suggestions.